So I'm John Travis here in Mullumbimby, New South Wales, talking to Bob Boyd up there in Brisbane. And it is the, um, oh, I forgot to look at the date, something like the 13th? 13th of November. Of December. December. 2019. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one the month behind. <laughs> <laughs> and I met you, Bob, uh, what, 15 years or more ago um, after a national wellness conference. I think it was 2006. Yeah, we had just moved up north <clears throat> and um, uh, discovered a kindred spirit and uh, a pioneer here in Australia with wellness. And what I want to find out today is who you are and why. Uh, what you've done is already documented and uh, I'll have links to that. But I want to go back to your, your roots and what led you to go into health and fitness and earliest memories? Well, earliest memories was um, uh, I'd always been always been fairly active um, as kids. Um, I got nephritis when I was 11. Um, wanted to play football, of course. Um, and the doc said, would that be crazy? You can't play football for a while with your kidneys. Um, take up something that's less, uh, less dangerous. So I played hockey um, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. That is that, a joke, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a joke. It's, it's serious because I suppose uh, the chances of being hit in the kidney with a ball, I suppose it was a bit less than getting someone to fall on, my, on their knees. Well, the uh, kind of hockey back. games I've seen are pretty violent. <laughs> yeah, but that's um, field hockey, not ice hockey. We haven't got oh. ice hockey, yeah. Um, and uh, my mum had always, she had been a, um, a women's lifesaver, um, still water lifesaver. Um, so she made, the, she made sure that we uh, were swimmers from a fairly early age, which in those days was a little, a little different. The school I went to um, did have a pool and we did have swimming lessons there. And um, I probably was a good swimmer by the time I got sick anyway in year in year five at school um so I continued that afterwards um um was never a I made um state championships but never uh, represented the state in swimming um now where but, is this uh, in Brisbane in Brisbane yeah I grew uh -huh. up in Brisbane um I um I played um uh, top level uh, hockey but never represented the state or anything. Um, so when I had finished uh, year eight in school um, and done my scholarship, uh, our phys ed teacher at school um, said, look, you, I think you make a, a, a good phys ed teacher. Um, why don't you come and spend the last two weeks of school um, here with me at the pool? Probably totally illegal, but anyway, that's what I did. I thought that was fantastic. So I think that for those two weeks, he sat on the side and, and um, watch me um, teach swimming, which um, I absolutely enjoyed. And I actually did that at our swimming club as well. Um, so I suppose the teaching part and the swimming part and the active part was, was part of it. Um, when I then went to teachers college, um, we had to get a scholarship to do, um, to do physical education. Um, he, he, we had to get in, in, uh, inspected by a person who was giving out the scholarships. Um, and we actually then had to teach a lesson, a, a physical edu education lesson in, in front of this person. And guess who came out to inspect us? Was George Hay, who was, had been our, he was now inspector who had been our phys ed teacher. So oh, of really? course, I, I suppose I, <laughs> I got a scholarship. So yes, I went through three years of uh, nighttime and Saturday morning study to become a phys ed teacher. Um, from there, then I actually um, taught physical education in, in, in uh, primary and, and high schools. Um, I also then, um, what happened that was our physical education um, uh, faculty um, at the university um, became a human movement uh, faculty as distinct for phys ed which was then a full-time, uh, became a full-time four-year four degree. I had got a scholarship to go to another university in Perth who already had a human movement four-year four degree. Um, and I was about to go before the new, uh, the new um, 
director of of the, the UQ one arrived. Um, he was Dr. UQ Alan being Tolson. University of University Queensland, Queensland for our yeah, viewers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, the the um, head um, called me in um, was Dr. Alan Coles, who actually went on to become part of um, setting up Australia's uh, Australian Institute of Sport. Um, and said to me, why were you going to, to Perth? And I said, well, I got a scholarship to go to, to there uh, and there's nothing here in Australia, in Queensland. And he said, yes, there is, it's starting next year. So I didn't go. So I stayed at, at uh, UQ in Brisbane. So yeah, look, I, I became, my stream in, in the human movement was exercise physiology um, and, and a lot of physiology and health. Um, so towards the end of that, um, we were approached, uh, another guy and I were approached to, to actually test a, um, what would you call it, an exercise machine uh, that a, a certain person had brought from America where he used to sell them. Um, and we put that through quite a rigorous uh, assessment and gave a physiology and exercise physiology assessment. He then asked us to, um, uh, what's it, market it, promote it at a, at a, a fitness um, conference uh, here in Brisbane um, by putting on a lab coat and, and, and putting on uh, ECG, three, three lead ECG for exercise and having people use his machine, um, which went down quite well because a lot of people had never seen an ECG to start with. That's electrocardiogram for, for Americans, <laughs> EKG. Um, um, so towards the end of that year, then we got a call from this uh, gentleman um, and said, I'm setting up a, um, a health centre next year. Are you interested? Well, I bought in um, thinking, what am I going to do after my degree is up? I'm not going back teaching. Um, so I bought in. Um, and that's how the Heartbeat Centre started. That's what the name was that we came to, it's called the Heartbeat Centre. So I was one of the first exercise physiologists. Um, now, mind you, in those days, there was no exercise physiology profession in Australia at that point in time, because we only had two degrees uh, in, in Australia, um, turning out exercise physiologists. Um, so we started that Heartbeat Centre and um, it, we, we demonstrated that um, and people were very interested and we got to know this gentleman. Towards the end of the year, he then invited us to actually talk to him about him setting up a health uh, centre. Um, um, and that's basically how it started. Um, we looked around for sites with him. Um, I had a chance to buy in, uh, not knowing what I was going to be doing after my degree. I certainly wasn't going back teaching. Um, um, so that's how the Heartbeat Centre started in 19, um, early, early 19, um, well, mid, mid 1975, I suppose it was when we actually opened the doors. Um, wow, that's right. That's before I opened my wellness centre. Well, well, that was basically uh, a fitness centre, a health centre at that stage. Still so a radical what, idea. <laughs> so what I was saying is that basically when we started to, to do a health assessments on people and, and deal with them in the, in the rooms, et cetera, et cetera, I realized what was happening is that we weren't dealing with muscles and bones. We were dealing with people and people were much more, more entertaining or, or, or um, intriguing to me than just the way a bone had to work or a muscle had to work to do a particular exercise. So we expanded the, the center um, into having physiotherapists, um, psychologists, psychiatrists, um, of course, exercise physiologists, et cetera. So a whole team of people that, that worked, not actually in the center, but worked as um, co-people, co co-professionals um, uh, within the center. And we expanded into all sorts of um, different programs, um, antenatal, prenatal, um, uh, cancer, uh, um, uh, cardiovascular, cardiac heart disease, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then that's when we also started in the corporate area. So at this point, I'd never heard of the word wellness, never heard of it, whatever. 
neither um, anyone else. No, exactly right. So we won a couple of awards, um, business awards um, through the through the early eighties. Um, the, uh, the 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 programs that we were doing were, 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 well, without patting myself on the back or us on the back, I think were, were very good. We, we had some fantastic results with people, um, not only just physically, but actually as human, human beings. Um, excuse me. <coughs> um, so in um, 1980, 1988, um, I'd actually gone back um, lecturing at, 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 uh, um, at, well, it wasn't the university then, it was the Brisbane College of Advanced Education. Um, in, in the health area, um, the fitness area, and trying to push more, uh, more holistic health as distinct from, from just the, the, medi the, the, the normal uh, medical health. And that's when I heard, first heard the word wellness. And that's when Grant Donovan, who I actually happened to be on a committee, the Australian Fitness Accreditation Committee, um, that I was chairing at that time, um, Grant said he was holding a wellness conference in Perth in 1990. Um, did I want to come? And of course I said yes, because it, that's what, without even knowing what really what wellness was, but the way he explained it, it was more about looking at the person as uh, as a holistic person not just fitness etc cetera, etc cetera. so i went along and that's where i first uh, ran across um bill hetler uh, um don ardell sandy queen um jack i don't think you were there with that one no nope, i i didn't make that one yeah yeah so i didn't i didn't meet you there but anyway, um, after after that conference, of course, I came back and joined National Wellness Institute. Um, so that was 1991. Now, at that point in time, um, the Brisbane College's Advanced Education were, were forced, that's the word I'll use, into becoming uh, universities uh, all around Australia. It wasn't just uh, in, in Queensland or Brisbane. So, the Brisbane College of Advanced Education um, joined with, with Queensland Institute of Technology to become Queensland University of Technology. Mm -hmm. um, and because of what uh, I had my experience uh, at Heartbeat Centre um, of doing what we did, I was, um, I was asked to um, apply for a lecturer's job, uh, a, an associate lecturer's job. Um, teaching into the, the new the new school of human movement that was set up within QUT, Queensland University of Technology, um, and there I there I ran across a, a person who had gone through university back in the seventies behind me, um, Dr. Tom. Well, he wasn't doctor then; he was Tom Cuddy, and Tom actually went. Um, and did his doctorate in wellness promotion uh, in the US and came back. And of course, we got together and started to talk all things wellness. So when we had to come up with courses for the new universe, with the new human movement um, school, of course, we wanted a wellness course in there. Now, having learnt from Bill uh, about the first year course at the University of, of Wisconsin for students um, on, on wellness, then that's what we modeled what we wanted to do for our, our students. Now, the funny thing was <laughs> when we, when we um, put up the, that particular course to the academic board as part of the part of the, the uh, curriculum, we, they knocked it back. Um, not on the fact of the content, but on the content, uh, on the fact that the word wellness didn't mean anything to them. Mm -hmm. So to actually get it through, we had to call it fitness, health and wellness. HMB 171, fitness, health and wellness. So we taught that the first year to the second years actually of that course in 1994 four it must have been um and to 75 students um 
the history of that then is that we first we then got it changed to being a first semester first year subject for the students um, because we promoted it as being something that the students needed to learn to get through four years of university <laughs> Uh, which, which, you know, which is, and we model that, of course, on the NWI six, six dimensions model. Um, and Jack, your um, continuum was part of the lectures because we had learned about that through NWI. Um, so um, just as an aside, that course over a number of years of us teaching it morphed from our first time of teaching at 75 to actually teaching it to over 500 students from all, wow. around, all around the university. Um, and in fact, we were asked by the teaching and learning group in 1998, I think it was, I'm jumping ahead here, um, <clears throat> to put it up as a total university core course, which we did. We put it up to the academic board <clears throat> Um, as for every student coming into QUT to actually do this course. A um, lot of discussion, um, the board members, we were actually in the room while they were discussing it and saying how fantastic it was, what a great idea, et cetera, et cetera. But they knocked it back. And Jack, believe me, the reason why they knocked it back is they could not agree on which of the eight faculties would get the money out of that course. <laughs> I don't normally make a big fool of myself in front of committees like that, but I stood up and I said, you, I didn't say you were a mob of wankers, but I just sort of said, I <laughs> cannot believe what you people are saying that you would knock a course on the head based on the fact of money. I said, it is a, if it's going to be a university course, then the university gets the money. And then people who are teaching it get paid to their, to their faculty for teaching. The rest of the money then should go for student improvement of their wellness for the four for the four or five years they're at university. Uh -uh, still didn't happen. Was one of the most disappointing things in my life with regard to academic wow. situation. Anyway, back to back to 1994. Uh, our first um, our first uh, uh, group to come out for four year was 1996, <clears throat> and what what we had meant what i had managed to do um through their four years was while i was teaching fitness health and wellness i was also teaching a first year a sorry a second uh, year course on on corporate wellness um and i was also director of their um what was called student experience now our experience was a first introduction in year one was just visiting visiting um, centres. Um, second year, they actually had to do a little bit of a, a, a project study. Uh, third year um, was more an actual design study where they had to report on it and actually implement. And in fourth year, their last degree, sorry, their last term or semester, they weren't at university. So for those 12 weeks, they were actually uh, an unpaid a person, employee working in, in, a, in, in a, um, an organization, which of course was a wellness organization or a health organization or a fitness organization that part of my job as practicum director was to actually get them those positions. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually had students all around the world. Um, in the States and the Maldives, the UK, um, you name it, New Zealand, we had students all around the world doing that 12 week prac. Um, and many of them got jobs out of that. But the reason I'm telling you that is part of what, the, what they had to do as of their last project was at the end of, sorry, before they started was to do a spin on that six wheel, um, to, to perceive their wellness status in those um, six dimensions, okay? At the end of every week, they had to do another perception. Uh, at the end of the whole 12 weeks, they had to do a comparison again. And that formed part of their discussion 
about how they as a person dealt with people, the organization, their PRAC, um, and they were also encouraged to do a, a, a perception if they had a really bad day or a really good day. Now, by the time those students had done all this, their accuracy of perceiving their scores in those areas against the test well um, uh, inventory for, for college students was amazingly accurate, amazingly accurate. So they had become very good wellness, um, uh, very aware of, of what, what wellness was. Um, and the thing is, I still occasionally now get a past student from that era writing back and saying, hi, Bob, how's it going? I've just done my wellness, wellness wheel. It's looking good. Ah. So now, yeah. uh, uh, the name of this program and how many students would you have in it? Um, that they were just human movement uh, year four students. So by the time we, by the time they got through the four years, uh, we were probably down to 30 students graduating, 25 to 30 students, where we'd started off with 75 or 80. Some of them, some of them only booked in for a three-year a course uh, over a diploma, uh -huh. not not sorry, a, a degree in um, in exercise science. It wasn't a degree in human movement. So some some of them only did three years, but the the, the four years ones are the ones that went out on prac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, Let's fast forward then uh, to, to Let me the, back up though, yep, uh, yep. even farther. What became of your involvement with the, was it Health Beats? The, the, Heartbeat uh, Center. Heartbeat Center, yeah. Yeah, we, um, we were still unique. Um, people were trying to copy us. Um, my business partner at that time, um, because we'd just moved a venue, um, into a brand new building, there were all sorts of build, building problems. Um, every time it rained from the southeast corner, we got flooded. Um, some of the tiles were lifting on the, on the, on the foyer. Um, some of the other um, professionals were having uh, issues with their ceilings. Um, anyway, without me knowing it, because he was running the, the, the business side of that, um, he held back um, after trying to get them to fix things, um, he held back um, uh, paying the rent for at least over a couple of months. And I, I walked in one morning to open up at five o'clock because uh, it was my turn to open up and the key wouldn't work. Um, that closes out. So it fell apart. Um, we had um, negotiated a, to sign a contract um, that Friday um, for, with, with a company to run their company uh, wellness program uh, of over $20,000. Um, but of course, if we didn't have any doors open, um, we couldn't sign the contract. So we, we closed down um, um, the, the, um, the, the, that side of it, um, paid everybody else out um, with regard to owing them uh, any money for their contracts they had with us for two months or a month paid them all out and um, that was it. So you were doing this as well as the academic program? Yeah, I was, class. I was, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now let's yeah. fast forward. <laughs> okay, so in 2004, um, I was invited, well, no, okay. First thing, in, um, I could never get to the National Wellness Conference because it was always on the first week of our second semester teaching. And I don't care what it is, you do not get permission to leave the university to do anything in the first week, because it's an utter chaos. So I never got to the conference. But in 2004, they changed the conference forward a week. So I put in to do, to give a, a, um, a, um, a pay, a, what do you call it, a, um, a, um, uh, you know, uh, a board. Presentation? No, not a presentation, a, um, a poster. Poster, thank you very much. So I took a poster and, and went for the, for the week. Um, 
and absolutely enjoyed it to the hilt. Um, that's when I first met Michael Oloski. I had been out um, driving because I was, um, Bill Hedler has said, if you're coming over, you must meet John Munson. Um, and I actually got a B&B &B right across the road from John Munson as it, <laughs> as it turned out by sheer accident in, mm. um, in Stevens Point. Um, and he had said, look, um, it doesn't start until, you know, Saturday afternoon, whatever it is, uh, go for a drive out to Green Bay. Anyway, I'd come back a little bit late because there'd been a, um, a twister uh, across uh, a, a bit of a worry. But anyway, I walked in and they said, oh, we've started. Uh, your first session is down this corridor and around to the right. Um, so I started off and of course, as you know, your first, first time a badge, first time a badge is, is huge and, and yellow with the yellow underneath it with your first name up front. It took me about a quarter of an hour to get there based on the fact that everybody I passed wanted to shake my hands or, or talk about because I was a first timer and welcome me. So I was still another quarter of an hour late getting there. So I snuck in, I snuck in the back of Michael's circle that he'd, he'd set up and he was going around asking everybody you know what they thought they wanted to get out of uh, the conference etc cetera, etc cetera. so when i arrived he sort of said ah somebody's just joined us your turn so i immediately said uh, uh, my name's bob boyd from australia and there was a shriek on the other side of the room of somebody who stood up and said another aussie it was Karen, Karen Wolf, and she launched herself, launched herself across the room and jumped in my lap. <laughs> so from that point on, I was sold. <laughs> National <laughs> Wellness Institute. No. Oh, well, only at National Wellness. <laughs> only at National Wellness. So um, that was my first year. That was also the year that I was invited by the university um, because I had been on their um, uh, health committee um, representing um, uh, uh, our, our particular area, um, I got invited, and, and at that point we were teaching, as I said, um, fitness, health, and wellness to about 500 students at that time. I got invited for them saying, we want to run a staff wellness program. Um, we would like to offer you the position, here's the deal. Now this was in front of the registrar and uh, the health person and my boss and so on and so forth. There were quite a lot of high acting people in the room. And they said, here's the deal. It's a, it's a 12 month um, uh, appointment, um, not seconded, an appointment. Um, and you've got uh, this amount of money to spend. Uh, I looked around the room and I said, where are the funny cameras? You guys have got to be joking. I said, 12 months to change a culture in a corporate program, 12 months on a job that I'm going to have to give up lecturing to take on, not even a secondment. With that amount of money, you may as well give it to everybody and let them go down the road. Anyway, the boss dug me in the shoulders, <laughs> you know, in the ribs. And anyway, um, they said, well, can you leave us please? So he and I went outside and had a chat. Anyway, the next offer was, a two week, a two year, uh, no, not secondment, a two year placement, a little bit more money. I, again, I said, I, you, you obviously know nothing about corporate wellness programs. Anyway, back outside again, whisper, 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 back in. Okay, three years, secondment with a little bit more money. My boss leaned over and said, don't push any more, you won't get it. So I said, All right, let me think about it. So I did, uh, and that's how I became uh, QUT staff wellness program director. Uh, now, now I, I need to ask the word you're using second, uh, sec secondment. That means I am, I don't lose my lecturing position. Uh -huh. I'm just doing another job within the university. And when that job is over, I can go back to, oh, there, to yeah. lecturing. Okay. So A new term for us Americans. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's what it's called here. Yeah, now, so is this the location that I met you at down? This was uh, down, down, this was down at Gardens Point. Okay. QUT. Now beautiful that point. year. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, you, you, you wouldn't recognize if you walked into it now, it's been remodeled amazingly. Um, that the next year then is when I actually went and sat in, even though I knew you existed when I was there in 2004, um, in 2005, I actually went as a volunteer. 
and volunteered in the office beforehand and ran around like a, um, a hairy goat setting up rooms and everything else. So the following year is when I actually had a chance to sit and that's when I went to your lecture. Um, even though I knew about you, et cetera, et cetera, that's the first time I heard you say um, about Mullumbimby. I didn't know that you spent six months back in Australia. So when I came home, when I came back to, to QUT, that's when I said, mm, if Jack has to come back in through, through Brisbane, I wonder whether or not he would deem to come and have a chat for a very brief chat um, and find out what we're doing here at QUT. And that's when I emailed you. And that's when you emailed me and said, yes, yeah. I'll be there. So when you turned up, I expected to spend half an hour with you and um, you on your way. And what did we finish up? Still talking two and a half hours, three hours later. <laughs> so that's when we really linked as soul, yeah. soul yeah. people. Okay, moving on from that then, um, we, yeah, you, you all know our interactions, etc. Where from there? Um, so that was also the year in 2006 that um, a number of us had been sitting around talking about why can't we have a National Wellness Institute in Australia? Um, and the people in the conversations were Tom and, and uh, some other people in the university who were on board with wellness and some of our past students um, from 2006 onwards who were still interested and, and still in contact with us. So that's how we started NWI Australia, National Wellness Institute Australia, um, that year, like, later that year, and, um, and held our first conference way ahead of time. We should not have done it, um, but we did. We held a conference, um, haven't held one since. Um, and I was that, impressed that uh, you pulled that off. Yeah, uh, Judd, you yeah. had Judd come over and- Yes, uh, we did. And, um, uh, that is. Yeah, you, uh, oh, temporary, temporary loss. But anyway, yeah, we had a couple over. Um, but Michael has also been out um, after that um, a number of times, um, and we've had others out. Um, and Judd's been Don's out. Don's been difficult. over too, hasn't he? Who? Don Ardell. Don, oh, Don's been over a number of times. Yeah. Yeah, a number of times. John Munson's been over a couple of times. Um, yeah, Michael's been over once. Uh, no, Michael, not Michael. Uh, Patrick, Patrick Williams. Oh, Patrick yeah. Williams, Patrick Williams has been over. Yeah, so, um, but of course that 2006, 2007 was when all the internationals started to get together at NWC to start to say, well, how can we take more uh, involvement in NWC? How can we encourage more internationals to come to NWC? Um, and then of course that growth has gone on from there um, to me being on the board um, from 2010 to 2016, no, 2011 to 2017 um, and culminating, getting better every year, but culminating in me on my last talk, my last board member, um, as, as a board member of NWI in 2017 and standing up and saying, if you don't formalize this international group, um, I'm gonna walk away from it because um, you've been talking about doing this for now two years. Um, so I think you either make a decision right now or I walk away from that. And they did, they, they formalized it. And that's how the National Wellness Institute International Standing Committee um, started. We held our first meeting then in October of that year, um, 2008, um, no, it must've been 2018. I've got my figures wrong. I must've been on the board from 212 to 218. Gee, it doesn't seem that long ago. Anyway, so with me being on the board, um, in 2018, I, I, I chaired that because it needed an international chair. Mm -hmm. mm. So what have I left out, Jack? <laughs> well, now uh, you, you switched uh, to the Calvin Grove campus at some point, uh, I thought, and 
what, what was your evolution with QUT? Okay, um, my campus for teaching uh, in human movement was Kelvin Grove. Okay. Oh, okay. So when I became the director of the, the wellness um, staff wellness program, I took that to, to main office, which was the, their main campus is, is, um, is in town at Gardens Point. Uh huh. And um, then uh, I dragged you into the RMIT master wellness yeah, yes. program for a while. <laughs> well, I mean, you'd mentioned him and, and um, um, he happened to be up in Brisbane doing doing something, something with what he was, spa or something he was doing. So this I took Mark the- Mark Cohen, just for our- Sorry, viewers. yes, I should have mentioned his name. Uh, Professor Mark Cohen. Um, I went to meet him. Um, uh, well, to, to sit in and, and, and have a chat with him. And um, he was, said he was looking for someone to teach uh, corporate wellness, uh, corporate wellness um, promotion. Um, was I interested? Um, and it was online. I didn't have to go to Melbourne, which was fine. Um, so that's how I got to be teaching mm -hmm. in the um, in the master's program. Well, two different levels in the degree program and the master's at uh, corporate wellness at two different levels. Uh, but as you know, in the meantime, um, the staff wellness program at QUT had been run down and run down, not run down. Um, the funding for it had been reduced quite dramatically year after year after year um, to the point was that um, we, myself and my little team of one um, I, and volunteers um, were expected to run a full program for 10,000 plus staff on three different, four different campuses at that stage. Um, with, uh, with enough money that each person probably well, uh, per capita, they uh, they were probably four dollars ten. I think it was. Um, they had no idea of what what was really required. I mean, they they were going through the whole thing about walk the walk, um, walk the talk, um, just the, talk the walk. Sorry, they they, they had while they they claimed they had commitment. Um, and yes, there was obvious of that with some people. Some of the um, some of the uh, uh, faculties that we were dealing with were right into it. Um, they even had their own taglines, um, like um, uh, the faculty of um, built engineering and uh, and uh, environment called called their own little little uh, program within the whole program. Be well. Um, and there was others that were doing that, all that. So the, the, the positives that we were presenting coming out of it, I suppose was our downfall. So we were doing all that with X amount. So now you need to do the same thing or more with X minus Y. And then the following six months, X minus Y minus Z. It just, it just, it just kept getting lower and lower. And that's my Academic got, bureaucracy politics. Yeah, absolutely. And that's when I got headhunted, of course, to go to CQU um, to teach wellness and corporate wellness and start a, a new, a new um, program up there of having students go out into the into the um, uh, workplace as as um, as as students and and unpaid. Well, no, in, for their program, um, partly paid people to actually be wellness uh, programmers actually out in there. So that was to start a new program and to teach up there. So that lasted 12 months. Uh, and as you, as you know, I think um, what happened the following year in 2000 and, uh, 2008 uh, was that CQU had lost over Christmas or had lost in January over $42 million dollars. Uh, because something went wrong with their overseas uh, recruitment for students. So the university in their right, I suppose, um, in their right, um, sort of said, well, we need to cut programs. So it's the old story, um, last in, first out. So they cut, cut the, um, the, new, uh, the new practicum program. That was the first one to go. Then the um, corporate program went 
uh, and uh, I was just then told that I wouldn't be teaching any of that, um, that I'd be shoved on something that um, they needed to find a place for me, um, which is not in my area at all. So I took them to task and said that um, I had signed a contract to teach these courses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you've broken the contract. Um, I'm out of here. Um, then they sent me a bill for transferring all my worldly goods back to Brisbane, um, which I sent back and said, um, I think you're wrong. I'll talk to my brother, who's a lawyer, uh, about this. Of course, I haven't got a brother as a lawyer. Uh, within three hours, there was a note coming back saying, uh, you don't owe us any money. Now, just for our viewers, CQU is Central Queensland University, University in, in, in Rockhampton. Rock Rockhampton. Which was what, about 500 miles north of Brisbane. Uh, yeah. I know I came up there and you farthest said, north yeah. I'd been at that point and you took me to the alligator farm. That's right, no, crocodile farm, crocodile farm. Cro yes, yes, oh, sorry about that. No, no, no. didn't see Crocodile Dundee, but close to it. <laughs> no, that was a good time. It was nice having you up there. Um, you actually met um, my boss at that stage, uh, yeah. Peter, Peter Rayburn, yeah, and a couple of other people. Yeah. Well, then back to Brisbane. Yeah. So then I finished up um, back at QUT, um, not as a lecturer, but um, being involved in a, um, an innovative uh, e-health um, project that one of the other lecturers had got a grant for. And that involved um, giving um, uh, uh, sick, well, unhealthy people um, on, on referral, um, a, uh, a phone, a special phone um, that they could, um, you know, phone into me at university um, and I would mentor them, um, coach them while they were doing their activity program um, and talk to them about about their wellness issues, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I suppose as a coach, because I had I had trained it as a, a wellness coach at that point in time through Michael Oloski. Um, and um, I had people all around Queensland um, using these phones mm. um, to do what was called remote, remote monitoring uh, of people doing activity and wellness wellness activities. Uh, all over, all over in, in country places where they wouldn't normally run across uh, uh, a, an exercise physiologist or, or a, a wellness coach. Um, that uh, that that went very well. It actually won a, a, a world award. Um, I think it's the second year of, of that. Then I was uh, headhunted into research um, at what, what then was set up for QUT called IBI, I-H-B-I, um, Innovative Health, gee, what was the B? Innovative Health. Behavior? No, it wasn't Behavior Institute, anyway. Anyway, the idea of, of IBI was that it was one area where all different professionals from QUT and from all different areas could come and team team research, um, uh, you know, things that wouldn't normally get done by one single person. Mm -hmm. um, so I was involved. I got involved in that, um, uh, running uh, running programs and running uh, research on mining sites for for miners, particularly with their wellness and their, and their fitness. Um, and um, after that, uh, I decided to partly retire um, and uh, set up my own, own business, uh, which is Wellness Communication Solutions and uh, a co, co business with um, Dr. Tom Cudahy, the other wellness person that, from QUT who had, who had retired. Mm -hmm. um, called Wellness Constructs. So we now, we now um, deliver um, workplace health promotion um, courses, education courses in, in personal wellness, and uh, I also do some wellness coaching. 
and partly retired, I suppose, semi-retired, partly retired. Uh, well, and a full-time just... grandfather too. That's oh the... yeah, well, yeah, that, that's taking, and one on, the, one on the way. Another one, huh? Another, yeah, February. All right. Yeah. Yes, it's made you a lot less available. Ah, uh, absolutely. A lot <laughs> say less you're available. working more than you when you were full-time employed. <laughs> loving it though. But you're loving it, yeah. 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 Well, what a story, Bob. This is. Uh, I'm curious about the e-health thing with the phones. Who who cooked that up, and is it still going? Uh, no, it's not. Um, again, project money run out runs out, um, and the the lecturer. Um, uh, who got the grant um, and that I work with, Charles Warringham, Dr. Charles Warringham. Um, he, he actually retired as well. Um, and sad to say to me, he's got involved in politics. <laughs> mm. um, but running, running uh, his own uh, consultancy in, um, in uh, falls and uh, he was more in biomechanics um uh, like uh, controls um what do they call it um machine controls and and the 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 movement patterns and things like that um i see him around occasionally um he actually stood as the um green um nominated green person a couple of years ago uh, in our local elections but didn't make it um yeah so it, it the the project money ran out um, after I got headhunted to Ibi, um, one of my one of my one of my students that I'd I'd been mentoring um, actually got the job, and she continued it through for um, to, to the end of the project, which I think it was a five-year project. Or what could have been four years, four-year project. Mm. And was it replicated anywhere else in the world? It sounds like an well, idea. it's it sounds like it got taken more over with e-health e now. With I mean the technology since 2008 has increased a great deal with regard to um you know taking ecg patterns and, and and all that through the through through technology but with regard to with regard to actually mentoring people or coaching people um while they're actually doing their exercise no it, it, i i still don't know of anybody anything that's that's been done in that way no. i could be wrong i could be totally wrong Seems like an area uh, rife for uh, development. And well, I, I loved it. It was yeah. so fantastic dealing with these people. Frustrating at times, just because the technology used to drop out. But hey, um, phone phone uh, connection here in Australia is, has has improved. Minimum. Well, it has improved since two thousand and eight. Um, so that was a problem. But it was great. You, you'd have your you'd have your um, you know your Google Earth in front of you. So you could actually see, because it was a GPS as well, you could actually see where they were walking or, or climbing or, or, or running or, mm. or whatever it was on your screen while you're actually talking to them um, and wow. monitoring their ECG at the same time. Um, wow. And every now and again, they had to press a button to say how they were feeling and th things like that. Um, mm. Yeah, and, and got, to look, got, to, got to know these, the regulars on a, on a personal basis, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that was, that was a, to me, that was a really a mixture of exercise, physiology, wellness coaching, um, you know, wow. yeah, it was, I really enjoyed that, really enjoyed it. Well, and your own uh, personal wellness, I know you're a, a big uh, water polo guy, which uh, uh, one of your passions, what other things are you doing? Because you're, you're uh, pushing 70 now, aren't you? 72. Oh, really? Okay. Mm. And you're still going strong and well, you know, I do that swim, the birthday swim. So I still keep doing that. You birthday remember that? swim? Yeah. You remember that? It, it sounds like the number of laps of how old you are. Absolutely. So, so uh, well, add no, a I lap every year. I had a lap every year. So I started that when I turned 50, uh, cause I was playing, still playing top polo then. Um, and about to about to not play because of time constraints. So uh -huh. I thought, mm, if I'm going to keep chasing this black line, I need to have a reason to to swim if I'm not going to um, have it for, for polo. So I thought, no, oh, well, turn them 50. What I'll, what I'll attempt to do is to do 50, 50 laps continuous 
in 50 minutes mm. for that year and scored it. And I think I did, did the 50 in 45 minutes or something. Right? So yeah, I've kept that going every year. Um, but I gave the time component up about three, three years ago. I was getting closer and closer and closer and closer <laughs> to actually time. So when I, when I did 68 um, continuous in 68 and 10 seconds, and then wasn't up to the 69 and 69 the next year, I said, right, the laps are more important than the time. So yeah, I did, yeah, this, the, did the diverging seven. curves like that. Something's got to give. <laughs> Well, I originally had said to myself when I turned 70, I wouldn't keep going, but I, I have. So but anyway, we'll see what happens. But yeah, yeah look, um, we've, just, um, we've just got back from walking in France. Um, that was something that I had never done that way. Um, we had walked in the Cotswolds um, earlier in the year on one of those round trips. So they take your bag to the next town and you walk to the next town and then the next town and they walked and you walk, you walk, you walk in a week. So you do a, a circle. That was good. I enjoyed that. But we didn't get to spend a great deal of time in the town that we arrived in. Oh. So this time these friends of ours who don't do it that way um, said, we're going to France to walk again because they've been many times um, in some areas that we haven't been, to, been in and some areas that we were in 12 years ago, 10 years ago, we'd like to revisit. Would you like to come? So we said, well, explain it to us. So what they do is they go to a town and stay, get all the walking maps from around the area, the bus time, time, time tables, the train time tables, and then say, right, today we're going to do a train trip out to this town and walk back 15 Ks, or we're going to get uh, walk out 12 Ks and then walk back through the bush. So on the 24, so we had a week in Nimes, a week in uh, Cahors, a week in Tours, and then three days to finish in Paris. But um, so over the 24 days of walking, we ranged from 12 Ks up to 25 Ks, which averaged out at about 15 and a half Ks per day. Wow. So it was fantastic. Oh. Fantastic being in the bush, or as this guy where we stayed in the B&B &B in Cahors call it, in nature, in nature. <laughs> he like walk in nature. He, he's actually done the um, El Camino. Um, so he, he actually runs a B&B &B in his mother's 15th century house for people on the trails. So uh -huh. he's an amazing character. He said to us one morning, I, I went and caught some mushrooms yesterday. I went and caught some mushrooms. <laughs> So he speaks French, English, uh, French, English, um, Italian, German, and Spanish, I think. Yeah, so wow. he's, yeah, he's a fantastic guy. He took us out to a walk. Because we stayed there for the week, um, he, he actually took us on more as, a, as friends more than, you know what I mean, just staying one, on, one or two nights. He took us out to walk in his bush, we saw absolutely no one the whole time we were there. We were the only ones in the bush. It really was fantastic. Really was fantastic. Well, what, uh, what kind of parting words do you have for coming generations who are going to hopefully be uh, watching us old, old timers? Uh, well, um, well, to me, it's been a, a head knock against the wall. Um, very frustrating, very enjoyable. Um, I always tell people I go to the National Wellness Conference for my wellness injection for the 12 months. Um, it, it's, it's frustrating. Um, when, when wellness started to become known here in Australia, they started to mix it up with well-being, quality of life, and even the documents coming out of the government were using the three words interchangeably in documents. Uh, and that's just that. So we've managed to educate, I suppose, that that's not the story. And what wellness, what people see is what, what they, they perceive as wellness is not the real wellness or true wellness. I like to look at true wellness. You know, the funny thing, Jack, is, and I, I must tell you this story. Just after I'd started at the, as the director of the, the QUT staff wellness program, the registrar said to me, <clears throat> Um, a certain, I won't name them, a certain um, big insurance company um, is trying to sell 
their insurance to our staff, right, as, as, a, as a package. And they've just started a wellness insurance. She said, you should go to the launch. I said, yeah, most definitely. So I went to the launch and sat there with a lot of people in the room and they were talking about this insurance and how good it would be. And in very, yeah, at the end, anyway, question time. I put my hand up and I said, look, this is all fascinating. I said, um, can you tell me what model of wellness this, this is based on? Honestly, I wish I had a, had a camera. The guy's jaw was just a complete blank. He had no idea what I was talking about. Like and the words he was thinking is there's models of wellness. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> um, so that's what I'm saying about the frustration and the commercialization. Uh, and, and the trouble is the, the, the person, the people who don't know accept what they see or, and perceive that as being real. So that's the frustrating thing. So if there's pe if for people coming on behind, if they can keep pushing, poking, poking to get people to ed be educated or to be aware of, or at least to perceive what, what the, the science and, and, and the true, true concept of what wellness really is for them, as well as for the community, their families, then if, if, if I want to offer a challenge, I think that's the challenge. We still have not survived. We still not have achieved that in, in, in the big picture yet. Um, now, I, I like to say, you know, Halbert Dunn's chapter yeah. titles in 1950s. 50, yeah. We haven't come close to that yet. And not yet. And every time I talk to someone, I give him Halbert's, um, name of his, his book um, and say, look, I still read it twice, twice, twice a, week, a, a year. Um, well, you, you, should, <laughs> you, you should read it at least once a year. Yeah. Um, and take your mind away from being 2019 or 2017 and immerse yourself in that book and see how contemporary it really and should be. It could be. For our viewers, there's a free PDF version of it on the website. So it's, uh, uh, even though it's out of print or the old copies are going for a couple hundred dollars, yeah. um, thanks to RMIT, it got scanned and uh, it's available. So. so is it still on your website? Yeah, uh, I've got a link for it I'll put in the, yeah. uh, in the text. Okay. Well, thank you, Bob. This has been delightful. I learned lots of new things about you and as to who you are and why. I thought I knew them all, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, so, we, we, we talk, Jack, but sometimes we don't, uh, we, well, we connect, but um, yeah. some, some things you don't connect unless you actually um, bring it out and talk about it. So I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you've uh, thought me, um, thought me good enough to, 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 to help you out with this project because I, I didn't hesitate. Um, um, because uh, I, I believe in what you, you and other people have been doing for a long period of time, and I'm glad to, I'm glad to have been, I'm still glad to still be part of it. Yes, well, you're definitely a kindred spirit and probably the senior wellness person in Australia. So. <laughs>